So, something a little bit different for this episode. And uh, if you don't follow us on Facebook or don't follow us on YouTube, uh, what I'm going to try out here ultimately is a podcast which will be on YouTube, and it's also going to be on a, an app or a program called Anchor, which Anchor actually is going to allow customers to call in. You can leave a voicemail, and we'll answer your questions. So uh, this first episode, we're gearing for about 20, 25 minutes roughly. We're going to see how everything goes. At the end of the episode, about five minutes left, we're going to do a little tool demonstration. We're trying to ultimately help you guys gear everything towards you to get your project done and just be better overall. So, um, you know, the biggest thing that I just mentioned and I want to stress is this is ultimately for you guys. You know, we're not looking here to sell any of these products. We're not going to try to promote and drive stuff down your throat. That's not what this is about at all. Um, I have a bunch of notes here because I kind of want to cover everything and kind of remember everything, but Gonna probably jump back and forth for our first episode, and what I want to also do here is introduce my my co-host, which normally I'm by myself. Um, my co-host, his name is Steve. Say hello, Steve. Hello, guys. Um, Steve has never been really in front of a camera, and this ain't his everyday thing that he does. So he might be a little shy to begin with, but uh, I'll warm him up and I'll get him to where he needs to be. For sure. Um, you guys could probably also hear that. We got some guys working on the other side because we are a uh, full out business and we do work here. Um, if you're not aware of who we are, um, give you a little background too on Steve. Steve's been a customer here for about 15 years, roughly. Yep. Um, he originally came in, he had a 2000 Civic SI black EM one. We did a turbo build for him. Um, he had a bunch of parts, but I think, I think the main reason you came in was it kind of was out of your knowledge base. Yes. Yeah. The fabrication parts of it. I needed Bob to do intercooler piping and uh, just basically take the project to where it needed to end up at. I had the parts in hand, but I knew he was the guy, had a great reputation on Honda Tech at the time, if that gives you any ideas. So. Yeah, Honda Tech. I don't know if we have anybody that still <laughs> actually knows or remembers Honda Tech. We probably got some older customers, but um, but yeah, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, so he also has, he currently has a 94 Camaro, which is LS swap which it says on his shirt, there so he goes from a Honda to a Camaro. He's still a Honda guy though at heart, I For guarantee sure. it. Um, he's got a 71 Cutlass with a 455 big block. Um, and to let you guys know too how kind of close we have become over the years, I actually stood up in his wedding. Um, I wasn't the best, best man, but I was, uh, I think, third in line. Um, and it was actually on Halloween at a funeral home, so that gives you an idea what kind of Kind of guy he is and uh a little bit weird in a sense <laughs> so um and he's also our it guy so we do a lot of stuff here of course with computers and if i ever get stumped and i can't figure something out uh that's ultimately what he um that's his profession so so i think that's it for the intro for you i don't think there's i don't know is there anything else you want to mention not really um not this point. so going on to um, our next kind of little segment that we mentioned. Uh, the other thing I do want to mention, as I mentioned this, as I keep saying mention, uh, this is for you guys. So ultimately, we have a couple customers already that we talked to, and we're going to have them on the show. Um, they're going to have a little bit of a more uh, open air segment where they can talk about anything and everything. Uh, we do have some topics already at hand that we want to discuss, not during this podcast, but. Um, you know, one of the things that we'll be talking about during this podcast is going to be uh, a, our dyno checklist. So our dyno checklist actually has, um, it's about four or five pages long. While you guys are watching this, if you actually go down below, we'll have a link where you can download this or you can email us, um, rcautoworks at gmail.com. We'll send you one for free. So that's what we're going to talk about on this little segment today. Um, the other thing too is we need ideas. So if you got ideas and you want to, you don't, you don't have to participate, but if you want to participate, let us know. Um, we have uh, ideas as far as we're going to talk about fuel injectors and sizing, um, basic stuff that we hear on an everyday kind of basis here where customers will call in and, you know, a lot of customers still believe that you gain power from fuel injectors and you don't, but we'll, we'll save that for the next show. Um, the other stuff too, outside of, automotive related stuff, uh, mental health. 
specifically men's mental health we want to talk about. Um, as customers have been opening up, especially after the whole pandemic, um, you know, that's a whole kind of subject that I personally feel is kind of under the table. So we're going to be talking about that. Maybe we'll have a guest on. I don't know. Um, so that, that's kind of it. You guys get the idea going on to, um, I, I think I covered everything now. Yeah. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if I'm missing something, you can chime in and cut me off. For sure. Um, yeah. So, you know, going on to our segment here, our dyno checklist. So what you want to do is if you want to read along, like I said, the link will be down below. You can email us. Uh, we can give you one each too if you don't want to download it. Whatever. No big deal. Um, the dyno checklist consists of one, two, three, four. It's five pages long. And there's a lot of basic stuff. There's nothing too crazy in a sense. But if you don't have any automotive related skills or know nothing, then some of this stuff is going to be like you're staring into like a brick wall and don't know what every, you know, I, I guess that's not a great example. But um, what we tell people is when they send it, we send them a dyno checklist before they go on the dyno, you know, if you don't have the means of doing something, be open and honest. I think the biggest thing in this industry is it's like an ego thing. And people don't want to, you know, come out and, and say, you know, I, I don't get this. Can you help me with it? And uh, or they just flat out lie. You know, the amount of times that we've had cars on the dyno and, you know, I can tell when you haven't even looked at the checklist or, um, you know, if we send you the checklist and 20 seconds later, you respond back like, yeah, my car's good to go. It's like, you know, you, you didn't you didn't even read and take the time out. The big goal for this checklist is to ensure that your car goes on the dyno and everything's 100%. I want the, the tune to be from start to finish, everything to be great. The last thing I want to get on, the, uh, and if you go back and look at my some of my dyno ready videos, um, the last thing I want is the car to go on the dyno and you to be leaking oil, leaking fuel, leaking coolant, to a point where I have to now redirect my attention from just tuning your car to making sure that your car has enough oil in it after halfway through the session to make sure this and this and that. So that's the main focus on the checklist. And as I read off some of the stuff, I'll give some examples. He'll probably bounce some stuff off because I do have some times where cars that make it, we do a, a little bit of an inspection before it goes on the dyno, but there's some stuff that we can't catch. And, and there's stuff that has been unreal, which, you know, the first one, in this little paper, uh, the top portion is going to be electrical issues. And what we're looking for is we don't want any exposed wires. Um, you know, and a lot of this stuff is going to sound like common sense stuff, but you know, I, I don't want to say, you know, common sense is out the window nowadays. It's just, I, I don't know why some people do what they do. I just really don't. Um, we were looking for people to crimp connection or solder connection. Now, you know, a lot of people look down on solder. I'll say that there's a place for everything. What we're actually gonna show you guys at the end of this little segment is this little crimp tool. And then we have these little gold connectors, which will probably be hard to pick up um, on camera, but we're gonna get the camera up and we're gonna show you guys how to use these, what they are, and actually where to buy them. Because we actually showed a customer this tool at one point and his response was, you know, man, I don't want to spend like 150 bucks on this. I'm only wiring up, uh, you know, four injectors or I'm only wiring up a fuel pump. And it's like, you know, you don't have to spend that much money to do it right. That's kind of what we're getting at and getting the point across. Um, so that's what we're going to help you guys. Um, the next thing is check engine lights. Um, of course, once again, seems like a common kind of thing. You know, if, if you have a check engine light for something that's going to be disabled in the tune for whatever reason, then that's okay that the check engine light's on. But if you have a check engine light for uh, cylinder misfire, you know, well, it, it's gotta be addressed. And, you know, the cool thing is, on your checklist, um, when we give these to customers, some customers actually will check off and put notes on his. Um, it it's says a, still on. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so this one also says that it's on, and then it also says that there's a little split um, in one of the uh, ignition wires. So that's just, you know, hey, I looked at it. I looked at what he was talking about. It wasn't a huge ordeal. Okay, we can go on to the next thing. Don't have to worry about it. Um, other thing is battery and, and battery and alternator voltage. 
So when a car is running, um, there's and not every car, so don't hold me to it, but because some car cars have alternator uh, saving or control, where at idle it, it alternator is not charging. But your car should be charging anywhere from 13.5 to 14 volts. And if you're good with technology, and let's just say you're running, you know, Haltech or or Honda, you hook up your laptop. And I've done videos before in the past where, literally, you can see if your battery alternator is, is charging. You can see if you're getting correct voltage. So, I mean, it takes 20, 25 seconds. And I know a lot of our customers love to hook up their laptops and get in there and, you know, I don't want to say look like you're tuning, but you can look at all the parameters. You can look at all the settings and, and the gauges and the graphs, and that's what you're trying to do to prepare before a tune. You know, you don't have to dial in the air fuels. You don't have to shoot us a message and say, "Hey, man, what what is my uh, what does my cam angle need to be at, or what is my uh, where, where my, does my ignition table look good?" That's that's all going to be handled in the dyno. So, basic stuff. Um, any inputs or anything yet? Well, I would say going back to the uh, wiring issues, I know Bob has seen some pretty crazy things that have been taking place just to get the car in the shop. Uh, one reminds me of a penny. That yeah. was used as a uh, yeah electrical terminal. So yeah, and and that was um, you know so we had a car that came in and we we're trying to diagnose an issue and instead of a fuse, there was actually a penny in there. Um, we brought it to the customer's attention and you know he ultimately said that he totally forgot about it and uh, you know he, he was gonna not keep it in there long term. But you know the problem is too is if we don't catch something like that and the car goes on the dyno and that circuit shorts out and it overheats and, and it's, it's gonna start a fire and burn the car to the ground. So, excuse me, it, it, it's something little, but it's something that can cause a drastic problem. Um, moving on to the next one, all major ground grounding points. Um, you know, this one's very common too, where guys will think that, you know, you're, you're grounding something out. Um, let's say for instance, on a Honda, um, Instead of doing the ground on the valve cover, which is what uh, K-Pro or, or Flash Pro all says in the instruction, some guys don't think it looks as clean, so they'll ground it on the intake manifold. The problem is the intake manifold is not grounding out the head because there's a, a, a gasket in between. So when you ground it out on the actual valve cover, you're grounding it out on the valve cover stud that will actually go through the cylinder head. So just another example. Now moving down, we go into fuel and fuel pressure. Um, on our checklist, it says fuel gauges are recommended for every application. Um, you know, the fuel gauge, and I don't have one here, but it's a $20 liquid fi filled fuel gauge. You can get them pretty much anywhere. They're about 20, actually probably about 15 to $25 in that range. So not anything that's gonna break the bank. Um, newer cars, not something that's really needed. And we're talking about, you know, uh, I would say probably 20, 2008 on up if it's fairly stock you don't need a fuel pressure gauge but if you got a, a fairly bigger build or you got a, a you know a 95 Honda Civic or um, a 94 Camaro it's nice to have a fuel gauge on there to see that we're getting proper fuel pressure and or if during the tune something goes kind of weird we can look and make sure it's not the fuel pressure we can make sure that the fuel pumps not you know okay the fuel pump died off um, we, had, we had a guy not too long ago brand new fuel pump die off for whatever reason, took it out of the tank. Um, it was a no name brand, put a new pump in, it was good to go. So just something that's easier to diagnose if you have a problem. Um, going into this, uh, it, it says to note your fuel pressure. You can talk to your tuner. If I'm not your tuner, um, you know, talk to any tuner and they'll tell you where they want the fuel pressure set at. Um, every tuner is gonna probably be different in that aspect. Um, let's see, okay, and then we go to the next page. And I'll rifle some of these off because I'm getting quick on uh, looking at my timer here. Uh, turbo, exhaust issues. Um, if you're running a turbo si uh, turbo on any car, you, it's optimal to have a three inch downpipe if you're looking for the best performance. Uh, 2.5 on some cars, if your clearance is an issue, it'll be fine. Um, we go, we talk about oxygen sensors. We talk about ignition issues. Um, so many guys will come in and I'll see it, you know, older setup, Distributor cap's never been replaced for 15 years. Just because a car is running on the street doesn't mean that everything is going to be A-OK -okay on the dyno. 
you got to remember when it goes in the dyno, we're going to take the car to the, the to the peak performance. The you know we're going to be redlining the car, uh, taking it all the way up there. So just because the car idles and it drives here, doesn't mean that you know everything's good to go. Do preventive preventative maintenance. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Uh, we talk about some OBD2, OBD1 stuff. Uh, we talk about fuel pressure regulators, um, which ones that you should kind of run, um, how to check for vacuum leaks. Uh, then we get into engines and, and compression and, and fluids, um, valve lash, um, timing belt. You know, make sure your timing belt is, is good. It shouldn't have, it should only have a certain amount of deflection. Um, and, if, and if you're unaware of that, you can Google it. If I'm your tuner, uh, you're my customer, you can message us. We're gonna help you out on that. We're gonna tell you. We could probably show you a video of what's acceptable, what's not. Um, skipping over some stuff here because a lot of stuff is basic too, like you know, oil leaks, common oil leaks, oil pan, um, you know, distributor seal, VTEC solenoids. Now, you know, we don't have to talk about everything on that. And you know, this is just a quick little show that we want to get off there and get it running and kind of go from there. And looking at my timer, we're already 16 minutes yeah. in. And you're not doing a lot of talking yeah, over there. So you're hitting all the main points <laughs> of the list here. But I think what this all boils down to is just don't rush yourself coming over to get the dyno to make sure everything's just good to go. Um, you're not doing yourself any favors or Bob when he's got to tune it. Um, plus you're leaving things on the table. If you've got exhaust leaks, your oxygen sensor is not going to get the right air fuel ratio. It's going to mess up the whole tune and it's just a bad day at the office. I mean, that's pretty much what it is too. And what you have to remember is when the car's on the dyno, we do allow a certain amount of time for having an issue. You know, let's say a car's on the dyno and whatever, we're having a breakup and we have to kind of diagnose it really quick. Well, that's when we're also looking like, okay, well the distributor cap hasn't, it looks like it hasn't been replaced in ages. The spark plug wires are, you know, older than dirt. You know, having that stuff top notch is also gonna help anything and everything go right on the dyno. Um, you know, when a car goes on the dyno for having a fueling issue or uh, whatever it is, we're not going to drop a whole fuel tank. We're not going to, you know, sit there for an extra one to two hours trying to figure out what's going on. At the end of the day, we're running a business here and my tuning schedule is, is super packed and booked up. So you have to remember that we allow a certain amount of time in that time slot or else everybody else starts getting affected and it, and it, it literally just goes down the list you know we have to push back a tune we have to cancel a tune and so we are very lenient on that and we understand that stuff happens i've been doing it for 22 years now um this ain't my first little you know show or, or what first podcast show but this ain't my first day in the office as he said um we understand I, I i truly do it's we try to get everything good because at the end of the day we want to tune i want to tune to be 100 percent. i want you to be beyond happy, beyond ecstatic, and this is why a dyno checklist, why we make it, and why we stress it a lot for people to look at it. And if you don't have the means, like I said, to do it, we can do a pre-dyno inspection for you. We don't have an issue with that. Um, going over this really quick too, um, something on here too is wastegate size spring. Um, so many people, they, we ask them what size wastegate spring. I don't know. Um, well, my, my my wastegate's a no-name brand and they didn't give me any springs with it or you know the springs are in there but they didn't give me a chart for them you know that that's the stuff too when, when you start getting with lesser brands uh you know less expensive brands you don't get a chart you don't know what's in there you could try to call them up good luck and then if somebody does know you know nine times out of ten it's we've had people yeah we think a red spring is in there and that's 10 pounds it goes on the dyno and it's like uh that 10 pounds is actually like five pounds so, you know, once again, it's kind of common sense stuff. Uh, boost leak test, if your car's boosted, highly encouraged. Uh, I, I don't care who you are, we do turbo kits here and we do a boost leak test afterwards. We will always find one or two here or there. Nobody is perfect. Uh, we use is, we, we don't use as many couplers. As, we use just the right amount of couplers that we need to on a car so the piping can still come off the car and we still have one or two here and there. And, you know, I remember a customer asked me and he said, well, well, how, how bad is a boost leak? Or, you know, I got a small boost leak. Is that okay? Well, there's two things. Number one, it's not going to be okay. Cause it's going to throw off the tune. Number two, you spent all this money to make the power 
but then yet you're, 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 you're losing power right there. You're leaving power on the table. You're boosting into the atmosphere, basically. Why? So, um, we're literally at our 21 minute mark and that's kind of where I wanted to be with everything. So that's it in a nutshell. We'll probably come back to something here and if people are watching this and you guys got questions or you want me to go over something specific, as I said before, you can reply down on, a, on the comments on YouTube. Um, we will be on Anchor for the podcast if you're going to want to listen in the car and, and not watch the video. Um, and then we're basically going to wrap up and at the end we're going to cut away and we're going to come back and show you this little guy. And um, I think that's really about it. I mentioned everything that I mentioned, uh, that I wanted to mention. We want you guys to participate, so hit me up with ideas. This, we, we're, this is for you guys. It, it really is, and hopefully it can take off, and hopefully it can turn into something, and we can have some, uh, you know, maybe we'll have some, uh, some, some guests that you guys know by name, and they want to come on, or maybe we can do a phone call via, I don't know, he's the IT guy, so he can figure out how to. We'll figure it out. We'll, yeah. we'll figure something we'll out. Figure and, out. And like I said, the voicemail portion is really cool, too. So that will be on the podcast app where you can leave a note, and we can play the notes on the podcast and we can ultimately answer it and go from there. And if we get something cool, or if you guys, like I said, if you think that you wanna be on here and you have a cool topic you wanna discuss, let's hear it. Besides that, anything else? Nope, that's it. That's about it, guys. I'm gonna cut away right now, but I'm gonna come right back. So if you're on YouTube, you can see this little tool demonstration. The links will be down below. And uh, I think that's it. Appreciate you guys watching. Appreciate you guys listening. Uh, guys and girls, everywhere, anywhere, uh, and I hope you guys have a good rest of the day. Enjoy yourselves. Okay, so here's the uh, the crimp tool that we use. You can see that there's letters, A, B, C, D, E. We actually use D a lot, so we have it marked. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. And here's the little gold U-shape crimp connectors. I don't know if there's actually a technical term for that, but um, if we actually show you one, there's four areas where you gotta crimp. The outer ones actually wrap around the insulation. And then I just brought these on board. Um, you know, if, if you walk on a Mac or Snap-on truck, I'm sure you'll see these for probably over $50. I think they're on Amazon for like 20 bucks. So once again, um, not very expensive. And then we have a wire that I already stripped here. And for how we do it, you pretty much make an X and then we're gonna fold Fold it over, making it super tight. And then you basically just wanna, you can set the gold connector in here to a point where it actually wants to hold on. Sometimes if you get lucky, if you don't get lucky, there you go. And then basically you're gonna put it in here like this. And let me get it set up first and I'll show you guys. And then all you're going to do is just crimp down, squeeze, pull it out, we're just doing the copper right now, just want to show you guys. So I didn't do the outers, but you can see how the outers are gonna wrap around the insulation. And then we'll throw some heat shrink on there. And then if we just do a little tug test, as we call it, these ain't going anywhere. You can pull on them until you're blue in the face. And that's a good solid connection that's not gonna go anywhere. So, um, you know, I think I said earlier in the video there, you know, you can use solder, there's a time and a place. You know, some people believe that solder doesn't belong anywhere in the automotive community, I guess you can say, depending on where you're, you know, what, what groups uh, that you're on on Facebook or, or message boards, if those even still exist. I know they do. I don't know if people are still on them, but, um, you know, these are really nice. And like I said, these don't have to break your, your wallet. Um, it's, it's a nice tool to have in your box. And I'm trying to see if it actually will focus. It seems like my camera was having a hard time there. And uh, I think that's it. I don't know. Did I miss anything else, Steve? No. Other than not to use these type of connectors right here. Yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't know if I actually went into these. I uh, can't remember. But, you know, we don't like these connectors. I, I personally don't like them because it's very hard to tell 
um, if you're getting a good crimp on there. Um, you know, if you don't crimp it hard enough and you're just doing the outer plastic, uh, we have seen these fail from time and time again. Uh, you can even, you know, take this, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it with this tool, but you could even take them off if you had to. So, you know, then you have that and you could just crimp that down with a good crimp. Uh, and, and of course, you know, this is a ring terminal, so you want to use it here, but they do sell, we don't have any of the other ones, but the one big seller that I see a lot on Amazon is the, a connector that has plastic on it and then you, you heat it up and you, it, it melts the solder. You know, go with something that you know is gonna work. You can see it right there. There you go, my camera's trying to pick up on it. And as I said before, these will crimp over the insulation, make a really, really snug, good, strong connection. So, and the link will be down below. And uh, I think that is about it, I think, Steve? Yeah. Sounds That's great. Good. Hopefully you guys like this uh, first episode. Take care.